It's a crucial element to almost every single material you've ever made. It determines the laws of how light is going to react in your scene. And it's just freaking everywhere. So what is it? What in the world is a BSDF? All right, so to get to the bottom of what a BSDF is, let's first put together the information we already know. Here's a list of every single shader in Cycles. It's a lot. And every single one that has BSDF has a star next to it. Now, one thing I noticed is that BSDF only occurs in shaders that deal with the surface of an object. You'll notice that certain things like volume absorption and volume scatter don't have BSDF. So we can tell that this somehow has to deal with the surface of our model and how it's shaded, which is exactly what a BSDF is. So what exactly does BSDF stand for? Well, it's pretty much the world's most boring acrostic poem you'll ever see. Let's get started. B stands for bi-directional. S stands for scattering. D stands for distribution. And F stands for function. So a BSDF is a bi-directional scattering distribution function. Well, now that I answered your question, you can leave. Just kidding, what in the world does that mean? Well, if we break the word down, we can figure out. So, first off, let's start with the word function. Function is a mathematical operation. Distribution refers to the spread or shape of. We'll just write spread of because that's really all we need to worry about. Scattering refers to the scattering of light. And bidirectional refers to the two, uh, oh, I just, wow, I just screwed that up. And bidirectional refers to the altitude and azimuth angle when ray tracing, which aren't really that important for our understanding. So we're just going to completely ignore that. So basically what we can conclude from this is a BSDF is a function, a mathematical operation to calculate the spread of scattering light. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we know what a BSDF is, but wait, you thought that was all you had to know? That it was just one weird anagram? Well, you're wrong because BSDF is actually a generalized statement, right? A BSDF is kind of like the top of a tree of different things. So we have BSDF chilling up here at the top, but there's actually two different subsets of BSDF, those being BRDF and BTDF. Now, they're pretty similar, right? All that's changed is the second letter. It's basically just B blank DF, right? So they're all bidirectional blank distribution functions. In this case, this is the bidirectional reflectance distribution function, and this is the bidirectional transmittance. So this one deals with reflecting light, and this one deals with transmitting light, and both of these together combined make the BSDF. So let's really quick look at a model of how a BSDF works, looking at the specific BRDF and BTDF parts of it. So here I have a ray of light coming in and part of it reflects off this, we'll call this a glass pane, even though it doesn't really have a specific name, and part of it transmits through it, right? So the light ray is split into two components, which happens all the time when light hits a transmissive boundary because you know part of it has to reflect, part of it has to transmit through. So in the real world, this is how a single photon will act if it comes into collision with a boundary like this. Um, but the issue is, in computer graphics, we don't simulate actual photons. We simulate approximations for photons, right? So this light ray could be millions and millions of photons in computer graphics, right? And we approximate those with a single light ray. So the issue is, if millions and millions of photons follow the same path, not all of them are going to follow this same exact reflectance, right? or reflectance or transmittance. What's going to happen is they're going to be scattered when they hit the surface because when photons, one, one photon could hit here and one could hit here. And although those are very close points, they reflect totally differently, right? So this causes the light to scatter. And this is where the BRDF comes in, right? So when it's reflected, the light scatters off. So this part of our model here is the BR df the bi-directional reflectance distribution function all right perfect so we have our model finished right we have the brdf you know that's all we have to worry about but no we know that we have the btdf 
that we have to deal with as well. And that occurs down here when the light exchanges mediums once again. So light rays will be scattered out from there, causing a more diffused look and a less specular look. So there will still be the specular, very bright mirror-like output here, and there will still be a very bright mirror-like uh, reflectance here, but there will still be some sort of diffusion as well. And we've come to know this as CG artists as roughness or glossiness, right? So these two surfaces will um, have a certain roughness value which will determine how much light is scattered versus how much light is um, reflected in a specular fashion. And that's kind of how this works. So this is our BTDF down here, forgot to label that. And overall, this entire function is the BSDF. So this exact model actually represents every single thing that has a BSDF next to its name here. So that includes anisotrop or anisotropic, diffuse, glass, glossy, hair, principled, refraction, tune, transmute, or what is it, translucent, transparent, and velvet, right? Wow, that's a lot of the shaders crossed off the list. Now, there are actually two other shaders on here that deal with, um, with surfaces, right? But for some reason, they don't have BSDF in their name. And those are subsurface scattering, right here, and emission. So my question is, why don't these two shaders have BSDF in their name, even though they deal with surfaces? Let's look a little bit closer. So we'll start off by looking at the emission shader. And the emission shader is pretty easy to explain why it's not classified as a BSDF. And that's because it's emitting light, right? The BSDF has to deal with light coming in and light interacting with an object, but here it's just emitting light. So an incoming light ray isn't gonna bounce off and be calculated, right? It's just going to be canceled there, right? Because this is focusing solely on emissions. So there is no function that it needs to calculate the scattering of light. Instead, it'll use some other um, algorithm to calculate where exactly light is going to be spread based upon that surface. Subsurface scattering is a slightly different story though, right? Because if we have an incident ray and what we know about subsurface scattering is that light enters and it kind of goes all jank and sometimes it comes out here, other times it might, you know, actually pass through the object. So you could say that technically, you know, this is kind of dealing with reflectance and transmittance because light's entering it and then it's coming out here or it might be entering it's coming out on the other side, which, you know, is technically reflection or transmittance, isn't it? Unfortunately, that's not really the case. This method is called scattering, and it's a little bit different from the scattering we were talking about before, because this happens across a volume, which is a little bit different, which is one reason that the BSDF doesn't represent it. However, it does have its own name. This uses a function called a BSSRDF. It's a little bit longer. So let's see, what does this one stand for? This stands for bidirectional Surface Scattering Reflectance Distribution Function. Say that 10 times fast, I dare you. That's, I, I had to, you know, engrave that in my head just to remember that. So there you have it. That's what a BSDF is and what it does. Now you're just a little bit smarter. That's not bad. That's like my first time ever drawing the CG cookie logo. Huh. Hello.